Hi, I'm Bill O'Reilly, reporting tonight from Hofstra University, Long Island, New York. And you can tell we have, uh, it's like the NFL out here, all right? Uh, Clinton versus Trump, I think that's what we're doing on the debate stage, and that is the subject of this evening's Talking Voice memo. Let's set it up for you. 90-minute debate, six 15-minute segments. Should get underway about an hour. The three general topics tonight, America's direction, achieving prosperity, securing America. Obviously, it was a very general topic, so anything could happen. You can say anything in those topics. Now, Hillary Clinton won the coin toss, so Lester Holt's first question will go to her. The same question will then be asked Donald Trump. Each candidate will have two minutes to answer the initial question, and the other candidate will have two minutes to respond. So it's a back and forth. There will be no opening or closing statements. So I like the format. I kind of think that it might take Lester Holt out of things, but... If a candidate does not tell the truth, the other candidate, it's up to him or her to call him out. Because Holt really can't interrupt while Trump and Clinton are speaking. So that's the format here. I predict a bit of chaos with the back and forth, and that might be very entertaining, so I'll bring it on. Hillary Clinton does have the advantage this evening. She has done these one-on-one -on -one debates before, most notably with Barack Obama. Mr. Trump has had debate experience only with a bunch of other people on the stage. It's a lot more difficult one-on-one. -on -one. Also, Hillary Clinton's much more versed in policy. She can razzle-dazzle with facts and figures. Donald Trump is more of a generalist, big-picture guy. So when it comes to specifics, you can expect more from Hillary Clinton on that front. But Talking Points believes it might not matter very much because demeanor, the way the candidates handle themselves, will be what many Americans are watching. For example, it would be unwise for Donald Trump to make faces as he sometimes did in the Republican debates. Remember that? Also, it'll be a major mistake for Mrs. Clinton to sound shrill or to call Trump names. That would erode her status as a public figure. Both candidates have been heavily coached and will come armed with one-liners, but they better be cautious. As we saw over the weekend after the Clinton campaign invited Mark Cuban to sit in the front row just to tweak Trump, Trump responded with an alleged invitation to Jennifer Flowers. So right away, the presidential debate got into the World Wrestling Federation mode. Fortunately, Ms. Flowers will not be attending this evening, so the circus is on hold for a moment, except for the people in the back. And yes, Hillary Clinton did start that. There's no doubt about it. But again, Americans want authoritative problem solvers, not foolish game players. The demeanor factor, the demeanor factor, extremely important in this debate tonight. In 1960, then Vice President Richard Nixon basically lost the election because he looked bad at the debate. Dour, sweaty, tense. By contrast, the young senator from Massachusetts, John F. Kennedy, whom Americans really didn't know back then, came across as vibrant and very human. I think Mr. Nixon is an effective leader of his party. I hope he would grant me the same. The question before us is, which point of view and which party do we want to lead the United States? Mr. Nixon, would you like to comment on that statement? I have no comment. And that was it for Nixon. Although the election was close, Nixon, of course, won the presidency eight years later, but he should have won in 1960. And then there are the one-liners. I will not make age an issue of this campaign. I am not going to exploit, for political purposes, my opponent's youth and inexperience. <laughs> That witty line turned things around for Ronald Reagan, who had lost the first debate to Walter Mondale, but made a comeback in the second thanks to that line. And then on, there was no stopping President Reagan's re-election campaign in 1984. In 1988, there was a vice presidential debate between Dan Quayle and Senator Lloyd Benson, a Democrat. I have as much experience in the Congress as Jack Kennedy did when he sought the presidency. Senator? I served with Jack Kennedy. I knew Jack Kennedy. Jack Kennedy was a friend of mine. Senator, you're no Jack Kennedy. Now, that line was not enough to elect Benson's running mate, Michael Dukakis. Why? Because the governor himself blew it. Governor, if Kitty Dukakis were raped and murdered, would you favor an irrevocable death penalty for the killer. No, I don't, Bernard, and I think you know that I've opposed the death penalty during all of my life. 
That answer from Dukakis painted him as insensitive to his own wife and hurt him dramatically. Finally, if presidential candidates get their facts wrong in a big debate, they've got trouble. Mr. President, I'd like to explore a little more deeply our relationship with the Russians. Our allies in France and Italy are now flirting with communism. There is no Soviet domination of Eastern Europe, and there never will be under a Ford administration. Now, that blunder by President Ford pretty much gave the election to Jimmy Carter in 1976. So back to tonight. The polls pretty much a dead heat going into the big show. It's kind of shocking because many pundits believe Hillary Clinton would easily roll over Donald Trump. If Mr. Trump stands his ground tonight, looks presidential, as they said, Senator Clinton could be in major trouble. I was in Colorado over the weekend, and polls there say the race is tied. If Colorado goes for Trump, he's the next president. Same thing in states like Pennsylvania and Wisconsin. On Friday, we told you that North Carolina will now go to Trump because of all the social unrest. Social disorder always drives voters to the more authoritarian candidate. So finally, what's my prediction? As Mr. T once said in a Rocky movie, pain. Both candidates, no matter what they do, will get smashed by the opposition. No matter how good Donald Trump performs, press will say blue. No matter how astute Hillary Clinton may be, those who dislike her will continue to dislike her. It's not like everybody or anybody will be going to Disney World after this. And that's a memo.